means miracle. And that's because mom was totally not expecting to have me. I came into the world 10 years after my older sister Mira, and both she and my mom adored me. Since my dad left soon after I was born, mom had to do two jobs to make ends meet. Growing up, Mira was always in charge of me. She was like my second mom. As a kid, I was quite short for my age, and I always got picked last for gym class. One day in third grade, I'd had an awful day at school, and Mira noticed my face when she came to pick me up. What's wrong, Allie? I suck. I'm gonna be short and sad forever. You don't suck. You can be the greatest person ever, but you have to see the greatness in yourself first. You mean I can even be a short president? Of course, lots of presidents are short, and you're still growing, love. Mira was the most beautiful girl in the village, and whenever we walked on the streets, boys would be falling over themselves to get her attention. But I was always there to save her. Mira, please marry me. Buzz off, bozo. Mira and I are gonna live together forever in our candy castles. No space for boys, right, sis? Right. Everything in our life was great, until one day in seventh grade, I came home to see my mom, Mira, and some strange man in the living room. I'd never seen Mira look this happy before. Allie, I'm getting married. Wait, what? My heart stopped as I looked at the man holding her hand. You can't get married. What about me? Plus, that man is quite ugly. That's so rude. Apologize right now. You lied to me, Mira. You said we'd live together forever, and now you're leaving? I, I can't believe this. I stormed off to my room and wouldn't speak to Mira or Mom. I wouldn't even join in any of the wedding preparations. I knew I was making Mira sad, but I was too heartbroken to care. After the wedding, Mira got ready to leave for the big city, and I watched her from my window. When she got in the car, she turned around to look up at me and blew me a kiss. Suddenly, the car started moving, and I raced downstairs. I couldn't let her leave without hugging her goodbye, but the car turned a corner and disappeared. It was too late, and Mira was really gone. While mom would be away at work now, I'd be alone at home after school, and I had to find a way to keep myself busy. I started writing, mostly to vent my feelings and miss Mira less, but soon I really began to enjoy it. Two years went by, and when it was time for high school, mom gave me some surprising news. She told me that she'd been saving up to send me to a fancy school right outside of the village. But that must be really expensive, mom. I can manage it, don't worry. You're so smart, Allie, and I want you to have the best. A few days later, I was busy writing when I suddenly looked out the window to see a boy on a horse plucking apples from our tree without even asking. I wasn't letting him get away with this. I grabbed some eggs from the table and ran after him, flinging them straight at his head. Oh my God, are you crazy? What do you think you're doing? The boy jumped off his horse and came towards me, and I noticed that he had the most extraordinary eyes, one green and one blue. How dare you take those apples without our permission? Girl, do you have any idea who I am? You can be the Sultan of Morocco for all I care. I'm from the Carlos family. My parents practically own this village. But you don't own this apple tree, and you don't own my house, so you're stealing and trespassing, sir. The boy stared at me and then smirked. You're a little firecracker, aren't you? And you've got great aim for someone with such short arms. Before I could reply, he dropped the apples and walked off. Ugh, just wanted to punch his face with my tiny fists. But if he was telling the truth, the Carlos family did own the village, and I hoped I hadn't gotten me and mom into trouble. A day before my new school was starting, I was beginning to feel more nervous than excited. The place would be full of rich kids, and I'd really stick out in my old clothes and shoes. But that evening, a huge package arrived at our door. I opened it, and inside was the most beautiful jacket ever. First days can be hard, but never forget how amazing you are. P.S. I'm sorry I missed Christmas again. Love, Mira. I was so happy I had something lovely to wear. Mira and I rarely talk these days because she hadn't visited once and now had a baby that always kept her busy. But I couldn't be mad at this gift. I walked into the huge school building feeling confident, and my first day was actually going great until I went to the cafeteria. I just sat down at a table when suddenly someone pushed my head straight into my food. Sorry, this table isn't for losers. As the kids around him snickered, I felt angry and speechless. I got up to leave when suddenly a boy appeared, the apple thief. Guys, you mind if I sit here? Of course not. 
Please, join us. Well then, my friend sits with me. He gently took my arm and led me back to the table. I played along with his act, but as soon as recess was over, I turned to him. You didn't have to do that. I can take care of myself. Oh, I know that. Look, we didn't get off to the best start, and I'd like for us to start over. So, what do you say, friends? Okay, if you insist. Friends. His name was Julius, and he'd been studying in the city, but he had returned to the village to help his father with the family business. I started hanging out with him and thought he'd be rather spoiled, but he was actually quite sweet. And even though he was new, he was soon one of the most popular guys in school. Everyone wanted to be his friend, and they all shot me weird looks. Everybody loves Julius. You could have your own fan club. <laughs> it's not me they like. It's my parents' money. They're also wondering why you're friends with the poor short girl. Why are you friends with me, man? Because you wouldn't be fake with me, even if I was the Sultan of Morocco. By the time high school was ending, Julius and I were best friends. I secretly had the biggest crush on him, but I would never say anything. I knew he'd never see me like that. One afternoon, I was walking back home after some errands when I spotted Julius in the park with this really pretty girl on his arm, and I felt my heart sink. Julius waved me over and introduced the girl as his dad's business partner, Sabrina. He asked me to join them as he showed her around, but I muttered some reply and quickly left. She was everything I could never be, and that hurt. For the next few days, Sabrina was stuck to Julius like a fly, and I made every excuse I could to avoid them. But one day when I was home alone, I heard a knock at the door and found Julius outside. Am I imagining it, or are you avoiding me? Why would I do that? I'm just busy. Busy or jealous? What? Why would I be jealous? Maybe because you have feelings for me and don't like seeing me with Sabrina? Jeez, you're so full of yourself. I don't like you. Not one bit. You can marry her for all I- Just then, Julius pulled me close and kissed me. I love you, Allie. I always have, but I was never sure if you did. I do. I love you too, Julius. It felt amazing to be with Julius as his girlfriend. We graduated high school and had the best summer together. And then one day, Julius said he wanted me to meet his parents. I felt super intimidated by the idea, but it meant he was serious about me. I wore my best dress, but I still felt shabby when I reached their house. It was basically a palace, and I could just tell his parents weren't happy to see me. The dinner was going awkwardly, and in the middle, I excused myself to use the bathroom. But as I got up, I crashed straight into a servant carrying in the next course, and we both landed on the floor with food all over me. Let's just get you home. He didn't even drop me off himself. He sent me back with a driver. But the next day, Julius came to see me with tears in his eyes. Allie, I am so sorry. My parents said they won't ever accept our marriage, and I think it's better if we end things now. What? I is that how you feel too, Julius? Are you ashamed of me? Of course not, but I don't have a choice right now. They'll cut me off and I won't be able to take care of you. Listen, I'm leaving for London tonight, but I will write to you often and I'll work hard. And when I've made something of myself, I'll come back for you, I promise. Why did the people I love the most always leave me? Allie, wait for me. I will come back for you. He kissed me and left. I cried for days, feeling heartbroken, but he had promised he'd write, and I decided not to lose hope. I waited for two weeks, but when I didn't get a letter, I walked over to the post office. It was a three-hour walk back and forth, and the mailman told me he had no letter for me, but I continued visiting for a couple of months, every time my heart sank when I heard the words, Sorry, miss. No letter for you today. But he promised he'd write often, and I believe him. The minute I get your letter, kiddo, I'll come and deliver it as fast as I can. But since I didn't stop visiting, the mailman offered me a spare bicycle so I wouldn't have to walk so much. One day at the post office, I saw a woman get a letter, and as she held it up to read, I noticed that the handwriting looked like Julius. I rushed to her and snatched it. That's my letter! But I was so embarrassed when I read it and realized it wasn't. The woman yelled at me and called me crazy before she left. Maybe I was losing my mind. And then one day, a man read his letter outside the post office, tore it up, and threw the pieces in the air. And I just couldn't stop thinking, what if he'd gotten my letter by mistake? I fell to the ground and frantically started gathering the pieces, trying to put them together like a puzzle. Kiddo, I, I can't watch this anymore. Y you have to stop. 
The mailman picked me up as I sobbed and took me home on his bicycle. Mom looked really worried to see the state I was in and stayed by my side all night. A few days later, I woke up to find Mira sitting in my room. I jumped up to hug her tight and she pulled me into her lap as I cried. Allie, I'm here to take you. You cannot continue like this. But what if he writes? Sweetie, it's been a year. It's time to let go. I was too tired to even protest. My bags were already loaded in Mira's car and mom kissed me goodbye and I left the village. It took me a while to recover my health, but it cheered me up to be around Mira and my adorable niece Anna. One day as I was playing with her, Mira walked into the room holding my old notebooks. I found these in your stuff. And Allie, these stories are beautiful. You should definitely start writing again. Do it for me. And Anna? At first, I did start writing stories just for my niece. But Mira also started guiding me about writing programs I could apply to. I joined a university close to her, and by the time I graduated, I already had a novel that I soon got a publishing deal for. To my shock, the novel met with huge success instantly, and I became rich. I moved to a small apartment in the city, and I convinced mom to come live with me. Life was good. And then one day, as I was attending a book signing event, I heard a voice that made my heart stop. Can I have your autograph, please? I looked up into those eyes, one green and one blue. It was Julius. I stared at him in shock, and then I felt a wave of rage. Without a word, I picked up my bag and left the event from the back exit. But he followed me. Allie, wait, please, just listen to me. How dare you show up just like that? You have no right to speak to me, and I don't want you anywhere near me. Leave me alone, Julius, or I will scream for help. But he blocked my way and took something out of his coat pocket, which he shoved into my hands. These are all my letters, Allie. I wrote to you, just like I promised. You just never got them. I stared at the letters and then started to cry. Julius led me to a bench and as we sat down, he explained everything. I was devastated when you never replied. I thought you'd decided to forget me and move on. And then my mom told me you'd gotten married and left the village and I gave up completely. But a few months ago, I finally came back home because my dad died. And Allie, I found all my letters in his closet. Mom confessed that dad had bribed and threatened the village mailman to make sure my letters never reached you. I couldn't believe that we'd gone through years of heartbreak and anger because of his evil parents. And I had been right to believe in him. I've missed you more than I can ever say. I know exactly how that feels, Allie. And with that, he kissed me and we held each other close for the longest time. We got married soon after, and it was the happiest day. Life with Julius was amazing, and I was so excited to have kids soon. But one evening, he came home with a really serious face. Allie, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I, I can't have kids. The doctors told me a while back, I just didn't know how to tell you. I felt my world crashing down. You knew before we got married? How could you keep something like that from me? Did you just come back into my life to hurt me? Before he could even say anything, I left the house in tears and went straight to Mira. I told him not to contact me for a few days as I thought things through. I'm not angry because he has a problem. I'm angry because he kept it from me. I don't know if I can forgive him. Of course you can, and you will. It's Julius. After everything you've been through, you're finally together. And I guess he was just afraid to lose you. You can make this work, Allie. She was right, as usual. I went back home to find Julius standing on the balcony, and I took his hand. Julius, we'll adopt kids, as many as we want. As long as we're together, I don't care about anything else. I love you. Oh, Allie, I love you too.